This is the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Uh, the Facebook machine was a flurry over the weekend when the video popped of an elk wandering the streets of McFarland late Friday night, scared, snitless. Totes furry? Totes fur? Very furry. Very Very horny. Um, spotted near the Maple Tree Restaurant just about 11 p.m. on a Friday. Uh, DNR wildlife biologist Joshua Spiegel. Spiegel. Joshua Spiegel. Not a quarter Spiegel. Sorry, Josh. Says the elk bull in question originated from a herd in the Black River Falls area in the county of Jackson. Man, he a long way from home. Yeah, well, this mofo has been logging a lot of miles across Wisco since September looking for a bitch. It's uh, breeding season, you know? Oh. Spiegel! Oh! Says... <laughs> <laughs> And now we would hear from the people. Says the DNR tracked this particular bull as he cut through the center of Wisconsin toward Wapaka, up to the Wasa area, then to the northwest in Taylor County, before heading back through Wasa, Shano, Wapaka, Shit. and Wisconsin Rappers. Wow. Dude, he is just looking for some poon. I'm on the road again. Looking for a couple of bitches. Says the bull has recently been seen in Columbia and Rock Counties, in addition to other areas in southeastern Dane County. Dude, he's everywhere. Man, oh man. Get him a lady. DNR is able to confirm this same bull has been wandering the state, identifying him through his ear tag and distinctive antlers. Boy, he's uh, he's got good instincts. He's sturdy, man. Uh, Can't believe he ain't got it creamed by an 18-wheeler. Well, I... Or found a lady friend yet. Correct. Um, maybe he's a little, you know. <laughs> maybe we should send out a Spiegel to make love to the air. <laughs> he knows the secret word. <laughs> no, we're not sending Spiegel out. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, anywho, uh, yeah, so, uh... Better ear, you than me, buddy, I can tell you that. Right. Ear tag, distinctive antlers. Wow. And then, it, with the public's help, they also track. So, um, another wildlife biologist says the DNR has been tracking this bull for years. He's three years old, but somewhere between the 500 to 700 pound range. God, that's incredible. The yeah. largest, the largest land animal in the just United States. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. Pretty cool. Well, an elephant maybe, if, but that's, yeah, they're not out there roaming around Juneau County. That is so crazy that he lived in, in uh, you know, fences. and. Well, this is crazy. When I look up the largest land animal in Wisconsin, it says your mom. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I will confirm this news with <laughs> the Spiegel. It's a bison. You leave my mother out of this. <laughs> God. Wait, a moose is bigger than an elk? Sure. A bison's bigger than Oh, a bison is bigger than an elk. It's not taller, but probably heavier. No, nah, bison get pretty tall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I suppose. That's pretty crazy. Uh, man, wouldn't it be weird if, if we had, like, a, a down at the uh, Henry Vila Zoo, we had death matches. In a cage, we put an elk, a grizzly bear, and a bison in the same ring, and we all got to watch the fight. I saw a video of a black bear. Where was it? A grizz taking down a bison. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Smaller bison. Oh, yeah. And then I stopped watching. Yeah, it's brutal. I've, I've seen <clears throat> it. It takes a while. I've seen baby bison get e- yeah. eaten like snacks. It takes too long for me to sit there and watch it. <laughs> You know, well, the baby bison don't know any better. They wander right up to a wolf. They don't. They don't know any better. You know, they think they're buddies. You know, it's fine. Nature, nature inherently is brutal. I couldn't agree more. Ah, uh, I hope this fella finds a mate, though. You know, damn yeah. nature, you scary. They uh, elk. If I remember my uh, information, 
And it's it's so great to go to Estes Park because there's herds of elk cows laying in yards. Yeah. They're just everywhere. You saw them, right? Yeah. Yeah. You'll see you'll see uh in town in the middle of Estes Park, Colorado, you'll see 20 cows sitting around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't mm-hmm. care. I mean, they're not afraid of humans. Like deer, they're just not <laughs> they're not whatever, they're not hunted like deer. I don't well, know. This is Rocky Mountain elk. They're probably different. Yeah. Elks are ready to mate around 16 months of age. They live yeah. to around 8 to 12, though sometimes they live more than 20, and I bet you they're grouchy. I know that uh, the big uh, bull elk will ball about, what, like a bunch of lady elk. Harem, I think they call them. Yeah. They'll, they will ball a ton of ladies. Just semen everywhere. I used to think there was an elk data semen base. No. Semen database. No. Got, got that backwards. That's fine. <laughs> We all knew what you were talking about. Uh, yeah, but he's he he's got one mission, and that is to give the girls a hot. Yeah, to drop some loads, dude. Elk beef injection. That is all he is there for. Dude. Yeah, it's kind of like when I used to go to Sergio's. I was exactly. The what does Elk and Johnny Danger in 1992 have in common? They dropping were... loads. <laughs> Looking for hot beef injections at Sergio's. God. So oh, dumb. Oh, Lord have mercy. So where is the damn thing now? He's wandering around. He's looking, still out. Yeah. Well, what's his last locale? We, I don't know. We just got, we got the McFarland one. Did Der Spiegel give up or what? Well, he should be out in the car like a tornado chaser. I'm going to email yeah. Spiegel. Well, at least they didn't shoot it. I mean, I, I, it's probably got a, you know. Think about think of the odds of getting that far without you know you're in the middle of a city. Yeah, you know they're gonna shoot that damn thing. Give it to the homeless shelter. Finger somebody's gonna shoot it. Don't you think? I don't. For know. a homeowner, if it's trying to eat its dog, you think they go out and just elk blast eat dog? Just, well, sure, it'll kill it. Uh, elk may be hunted with harpoons, <laughs> including vertical bow, crossbow, muzzle loader, center fire handgun, or center fire firearm. Um, don't have a harpoon. No. I don't feel very safe. So let's see. Harpoon. Yeah. October 14th through November 12th. December 14th through the 22nd is the hunting. Oh. I think you have to. Yeah, you have to get drawn for oh. one of them. It's like, isn't that what they are with the swans no, in amazing. North Dakota or whatever? Like you go out to hunt and you don't see an elk for two weeks. And then you're sitting at home having a beer in your backyard. You're at Quick Trip at the hot spot. <laughs> Some bitch runs here, through the parking here lot. Here comes Bullwinkle yeah. just trampling everybody. Yeah. Uh, man, oh man, that's crazy. Well, I hope it finds peace somewhere. Okay, let's see. Um, the Alcon application period is open March 1st through May 31st. Only Wisconsin residents may apply. Um, drawing results will be available in June. It's only $10 to register to go and mm. get Well, I'd hate to, hit, hate to hit that thing. If it's uh, heading south, I mean, that would give it a little more leeway. Maybe you could uh, take up the winter at uh, Bergamot Golf Course. That's nice. You could roam the golf course. That'd be nice, though. No? Let's go down to Lake Geneva for the uh, weekend. <laughs> down for a cocktail and a Christmas party. He's in Lake Geneva. Yeah, maybe he's just been wandering around plowing bitches this whole time. <laughs> maybe. It's kind of like a DJ in the radio business. <laughs> yeah. Plow a few here, get fired, move to Birmingham, share. <laughs> I done plowed all the bitches in Jacksonville. Yep. Now I got to move up to Madison. That's true. All right. If a uh, moose could talk, or an elk could talk. Yes? Hey, so I, I read an article recently. I get, like, the emails from the DNR that there was, like, 21,000 applicants for the elk hunt. Whoa. Last year, there was only 15 tags given out. Oh, my goodness. Holy so, How many elk are in this state, do they think? Give me a, a round yeah, round number. That I don't know. I did read something a couple of years ago that they got three different herds, one up in Lamb mm. Lake, which is the only place you're allowed to hunt them. Yeah. Uh, the one in Black River Falls, and then there's another herd somewhere else, and they've combined them from the Rockies and from, like, the Virginia area. Oh, wow. Way. They brought them in, and they've kind of expanded. 
Yeah. All right, well, they're doing it right. But they, uh, this guy was just rogue, uh, this uh, elk. Do we have a name for him? We got to name him like a snowplow. Yeah. <laughs> like a snowplow. Sir, how about Sir Loads a Lot? Oh. No, no. We, uh, no, he can't be because he's by himself. Yeah, he's by himself, I, I, I guess. All, All right. right, we need a name for him. We need a name for the elk, <laughs> our little adopted elk. Dog. Yeah. Where do you think the elk will ultimately, do you think he can work his way back north, or do you think he's just going to, he's kind of lost? Uh, honestly, I'm surprised, like, after i seen the videos and stuff like that from McFarland, I'm surprised that the DNR didn't tranquilize him and move him back right. north himself Right. That, by them. That's but, probably you know. a better option. They do that with bears, don't they, until they come back like a second time, and then they just take them down. Yeah, unless they're trying to see if he's wandering around and just find some, like, wild cows sitting around. <laughs> yeah, he's going to end up at like, Pax, dude, and that poor elk that's in the cage is going to be like, what's happening? <laughs> God damn. All right, DNR estimates Wisconsin elk herds have grown around 500. Thank you, Kevin. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so you get, what'd you say, 15 permits. Wow. Uh, okay. And that's open. That's all open territory up there. I mean, that's not, although it's kind of like a reserve area, isn't it? Those those areas for elk herd. <laughs> if, if, you're, if you've ever been up to that Clam Lake area, when you're driving through there, they have big illuminated signs that say elk mm -hmm. crossing. Gotcha. And they're. The radio collars trigger those signs so you don't run. Oh, around. I didn't Dude, know that. that. Look at that. Oh, that's interesting. Son of a bitch. So, uh, are they all collared? Are they all? They all got tags? No, just a certain few of them, I think. Yeah, interesting. I don't think they're all collared. I think all the bulls are collared mm -hmm. or tagged. I don't think that they're all because it's not like they're going to go in there and ruin the herd and tranquilize them all and yeah. tag them all. You Have know? you ever had elk? No. Yeah, fantastic. <clears throat> I would. Yeah, moose. Moose is good too. Elky McElk face. Elky McElk face. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Save Elky McElk face. We got to put that on a water tower somewhere. All right, man. Hey, dude. Thanks, man. You're a plethora of information. Yeah. You bet. Thanks, buddy. Good. Good morning. Oh shoot. Well, listen, this is one smart elk with all the wolves up north, buddy. I'd be down here too. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Load solo. <laughs> Dave Cobb, ladies and gentlemen. Dave, Dave Cobb. Thank you. Did you come up with that at your Thanksgiving dinner with that crazy family of yours? Uh, love, oh, yeah. Love. You've probably seen the pictures. That's like, dude, what a great band name, though. Y'all come out dressed like Darth Vader, Load Solo. Load Solo. Replay today, the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Get up with Johnny and D. JJO. Oh, yes, they call him the street. Things that shouldn't go together, streaking in Disneyland. I think that song mm -hmm. was number one on the top 40 charts. Dude, Ray Stevens. For Ray Stevens. <laughs> I think I remember that thing on the radio. Yeah, like comedy songs used to go to oh, like huge. number one. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was uh, holy crap. Are you telling dude. me top 40 played that song every 40 minutes? If I'm not, oh, for sure. If I'm not mistaken, do you remember the uh, Academy Awards? A guy streaked out on David Niven, who was presenting an award, and he said something that was, oh, what did he say? It was like, uh, uh, it was one of the great all-time ad-libs, they call it. He had a line right after. Can you, or I guess I could look for it. I can't remember what he said, though. Hmm. But, it, but it was right when the song was out, and that's why the guy streaked, because the song was out. Now, that, that was a thing back in. The early 70s to streak around naked. Dude, guess what? The guy that streaked got murdered. <laughs> what? We're changing topics. Yeah, I think so. Okay, really? hold on. I have, I don't know if this is it, obviously, because I can't. Don't look, Ethel. Okay, let's see. Turn it up. Oh, where you at? 
Uh, there was a naked man actually running past by him. And now to divulge the contents of this year's most important yeah. envelope. Here it is. Is a very important contributor to world entertainment. And someone quite likely. Here, here comes a naked guy. That was the naked guy. David Niven just kind of kept on going. I remember when that when that happened and streaking was a part of our world. I mean, you actually had to worry that somebody might come through your world suddenly naked. And then it happened in the Oscars. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that, um, that was almost bound to happen. <laughs> but isn't it fascinating that... <laughs> fascinating to think that, that probably the only laugh that man will ever get in his life is by stripping off and showing his shortcomings. That's, what... <laughs> that's a great line. On the spot with the world watching, that's a great, that's a great line. Yeah. My dude. favorite Oscar okay. moment. Stop. Okay. Uh, and then I'll look up. Yeah, hold on. This is fascinating. Okay, Robert Opal was an American photographer and art gallery owner, most famous for streaking during the 46th Academy Awards in 1974. Uh, born in New Jersey, he lived in Kansas and Kentucky before settling into Pennsylvania. He attended grade school, high school, and college. Um, in college, he was elected to student congress. He owned his own photography business, blah, 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 blah. Among his clients were the LGBT publication, The Advocate, and Finger Magazine, <laughs> where he was also an editor. Big fan. In 1976, he announced his candidacy for U.S. Presidy, presidency using the slogans, Nothing to Hide. Nice. And not just another crooked dick. That's that's amazing. Up against uh, Richard Nixon. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> I did not know that. That is so cool. Oh, that's cool. So in March 1978, he opened Way Studios, a gallery of gay male art. Uh, the gallery helped bring erotic gay artists like Tom of Finland and uh, Robert Maplethorpe to national attention. In uh, 1979, he was in a relationship, blah, 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 blah. They stayed together. He was murdered on the night of July 7th, 1979, during an attempted robbery of a San Francisco studio. Whoa. Yeah. 39 years old. So, uh, all that, I think he could have rode that crooked dick right to the top, but no. Didn't turn out that, that way. That sucks, man. Whoa. So the guy that killed him, so Robert E. Kelly and Maurice Keenan were the people that broke in. Was it in the act of the robbery? Um, yeah, during an attempted robbery. Um, dude was sentenced to 25 years to life. Keenan was sentenced to death, but the sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment. They're still serving. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Whoa. That kind of wow. reminds me of a... Uh, Kind of parallels John Holmes a little bit. Not that the guy was a porn star, but he did drop his pants, so he's running around with his wiener out. But John Holmes ended up a drug addict, stealing thief, you know, and yeah. died. Right. Of whatever weird thing yeah. you got back then from having sex with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> a plethora of diseases of blue. Damn, dude. Wow. Yeah, so he was only 39 when he died. Wow. Look at but, that. But uh, rode that. Train to infamy right across the yeah, stage with David Nevin. Totally. I remember when that's I I totally remember that song uh being on the radio. It was hilarious to us. Yeah, totally. Because we knew what the streak was. Because uh, God, that's so crazy. And that what was the other song on that on that record? That record was huge for oh, Ray yeah. Stevens. Oh yeah. That was I remember millions. Yeah, that was global. Uh what the hell was the name of that other song? Boogity Boogity. No, that's... Is Boogity Boogity its own song? Uh-huh. No. Yeah. I'm confusing my streaking songs with... I guess so. <laughs> um, no, Guitar Zan. I don't remember the words. I, I try to do it without looking it up because then it's more fun. Um, Let's see what was on the album. Yeah, he was a country guy. And then Freddie, that... Feel Good, uh, Don't Boogie Woogie, Bagpipes, <laughs> That's My Bag, Smith & Jones... The Moonlight Special, Bridget the Midget, Heart Transplant. 
He was kind of a Weird Al before Weird Al a little bit. Yeah. Kind of had. Little Egypt, Mr. Custer. I'm sure Little Egypt is not. I have to go back and listen to that record. Racist at all. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine, given the time. What is up with Ray Stevens? Is he dead? Uh, I'm not sure where he is. I, oh, he's got to be dead. Got to be dead. No way, dude. He's 84 and is still he, alive. Is he really? Oh, no. We could have had uh, Ray Stevens and Gordon Lightfoot for <laughs> Old Timers Tour down at the Orpheum. In February 2002, following the September 11th attacks, <laughs> Stevens released Osama Yo Mama, the album. <laughs> Dude, just write it until you sell that last copy, dude. Until you can't sell another copy. That's all you got to do. Can you imagine? He has if- a song called Taylor Swift is Stalking Me. <laughs> Ray Stevens. That is hilarious. He's still doing it. That That's amazing. So cute. Like if your grandpa was singing about Taylor Swift (laughs) stalking him. I mean, you know, weird, but. That's amazing. Funny. Okay. That would have been great Uh if he would have streaked out why Gordon Lightfoot was singing Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald (laughs) on a a dual show down at the Orpheum. Gordon is like, huh? Huh? (laughs) He's like, I'm over here, you old blind man. That I would pay $84 for. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yes. Yes, I would. I would. Break it up a little bit. It's very sad in here. <laughs> yeah. My God. So anyway, back to our original streaking story. A man was arrested after stripping naked at Disneyland on Sunday afternoon. Just after 1.30 p.m., officers responded to Disneyland to assist Disney security with a guest who removed his clothes and was naked in or near the It's a Small World attraction. Ah, yeah. the shades of the Academy Awards. Right. Uh, upon officers' arrival, they arrested a 26-year-old man for indecent exposure and being under the influence of a controlled substance, um, taking the hospital as a precaution. The man got off the attraction while it was in motion, and park operators stopped the ride when they became aware of the situation. Disneyland hasn't uh, really mentioned anything about it since, but footage shared on social media shows the streaker fully nude in the water canals near, near the entrance to the ride. Wow. Other videos show, show the man walking around the ride sets and touching its animatronics, wearing only shorts while Jingle Bells plays in the background. <laughs> Hello, acid, my old friend. Um, and one video posted on Instagram by another guest, people can be heard yelling, please stop and sit down. So I assume he took the uh, the undies off. Oh, yeah. Okay. He started in his shorts and then it just got worse. Good God. He just looked out of it, somebody said. Just wanted to cool off a little bit. He didn't look like he knew where he was. He looked worried. My friends and I had seen him and it looks like he was going to jump on us. Oof. Oh, yeah. They got him to sit down for a minute, and after that, he continued walking in the opposite direction behind us. Once he got to a different part of the ride, he ended up walking into the water, started drinking the water, and ran off toward the entrance of the ride. Disney is about the worst place on earth you could expose yourself with about 8 billion children under, exactly. the, age, under the age of five. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude, you picked that or the Chuck E. Cheese. Bad choice, bro. Right, right. The worst spot you could do it. Which yeah. Is, which is probably why you did it. God, that is hilarious. Uh, Yeah. So there he was, all naked in the gondola. Yeah, just proud of it. I think back in the 70s, didn't you wear a a ski mask when you used to do that or a mask or something back in the day? I don't know. So nobody knew who you were? Right, right, right. No, I don't know. I Man, I thought streaking was funny. I understand some people think it's sexual assault. But I, uh, I don't know, like the football game people, whatever. There you go. I'm also not as much of a prude about nudity as many people are. Right, right. I don't think there's anything to be ashamed of. It's okay. a human body. I'm Googling what started streaking. Yeah. And uh, I'm a damn hippie kid. Historical forerunners of the modern day streaker include the neo Adamites who traveled naked through towns and villages in medieval Europe, and the 17th century Quaker Solomon uh, Eccles, who w- went nude to the city of London with a burning brazier on his head. It's my kind of people. Dude, 
Is that my great great party? Great 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 granddaddy. Danger, Grandpa. Shut up, son. My head's on fire. Shut up. Oh, that is classic. Head's on fire, and your bras are catching. Yeah. Oh, Run, my God. R- running through the history of streaking. That's fascinating. Uh, let me see if I can jump in here without taking too much time. I don't know. Uh, Everyone's got. Uh, in 1974, Sharon Abbott oh. from the Worcester Evening Gazette wrote a column called How to Be Unclad but, Sh- but Chic for That Important Streak. That's how that's how many people were streaking all over the damn place. Yeah. Uh, her turn of phrase included riding the coast-to-coast streaking had become one of the most popular leisure sports, where student bodies are turning up en masse in attempts to outstrip their rivals in the disrobing derby. She Very good wordsmith here. I like her style. Yeah. She uh, referred to it as the epidermis epidemic. <laughs> and it said streaking is running the risk of overexposure. Then I want to explain that having the right fashion accessories is a good tie. To streak up a uh, turtle net dicky or a silk ascot to keep you warm on cold streaking nights. Oh, she's great. Streaking burst onto the scene in the early 70s. Uh, one story detailed concerns by General George Washington about Rhode Island soldiers romping around nude on Long Island, distressing local women. Was... <laughs> See, we ain't doing. Listen, <laughs> this is bred into our tiny, tiny mad brain. Right, and <laughs> can't stop it. We're trying to suppress the streak, and we should not be. No, you're going against everything we know. It's a <laughs> evolution. Uh, in the file, the final stories in the file on streaking were written a year after I came to work for the TNG. In '88, a student at the College of the Holy Cross suffered second degree burns while streaking. Uh, how you ask? It was the night in December, celebrating a tradition at the college, making uh, marking the first snow of the winter. Another student decided a good way to eliminate the streaking zone was to set a bed sheet on fire, and the streaker <laughs> became entangled in it. Godspeed, my brother, my brother from another mother. Godspeed. If that was the end of streaking, it was probably a good time to stop streaking. A scene its day, and I'm sure police are happy to see it pass into memory. I only hope creative and good humor Central Massachusetts college students continue to find new ways to show their independence and balls by pushing boundaries and buttons of the tisk tisk tisking older crowd. That's really well. Yeah, it's a good writer right there. Really well written. Yeah. So there, there you go. It's it ain't Ray Stevens' fault. <laughs> you gotta go back <laughs> the millennia. God dang, I just. I don't. Well, the is it possible man, to have a revival of I mean the, streaking? I and mean, the caveman probably was running from like a dinosaur or something. Right. So he, that's you know you can't count that one. I want to learn more about this fella in London that went naked and had a bra on fire. No on his head. kidding. That like, should be. That's probably my family crest. I should <laughs> go back and check. You can learn a lot listening to podcasts. And only three countries in the world don't use the metric system. Or you can listen to this one. I can't remember where I went Friday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What did I do on Friday? I got to check my calendar. (laughs) If anybody saw me Friday, call. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. I literally have no idea where I was Friday. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO. I don't know how to put this delicately. I've got a very big penis. Good. A Swedish cross-country skier was left fearing for his manhood as he sustained a frozen penis in an event in Finland. The popsicle stick. God, it's wiener heavy on the show today. It's like Lance is here. Uh, Kale Halferson told the media he had to spend 10 minutes heating up his appendage in a tent where competitors warm up post-race. The World Cup event took place in the town of Ruka. Inside the Arctic Circle, temperatures dropped to minus 15. Jeez. Before the 20-kilometer main event. Frozen penis syndrome. Mm-hmm. 34-year-old said, I have frozen my penis. For real. Damn. I had to lie in that warm-up tent for 10 minutes to warm it up. Yeah. It hurts so damn much, it's terrible. Anything above Kentucky, that's not a that's not a joke. That's, that's, that's ser- to be taken seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it hurts so damn much, it's terrible. 
It's lucky that I'm going to have my second child because this is going to be difficult in the future if I'm going to continue like this. Yeah, no blood flow. Yeah. Gone. Uh, when asked to describe the pain, he said, no. Those who know, they know. I'm so cryptic. <laughs> huh? I but you know. should get a tip from me. Yeah. Stay away from it because it's the worst thing you can experience. Oh, I'm sure. He wasn't the only one to pick up the affliction. Um, Finn Remy Lonum was also requiring treatment. Why don't we have wiener heaters? That's a good uh, point. You could put one of those, uh, you know, handy warmers down there. Yeah, the hot on, hands? On the outside, yeah, yeah, like in a pouch, separate pouch. I don't know if they make those or not. They get pretty warm, I think. I think they get too warm. Mm, well, I don't know. We, I use them all the time at the barn, but then yeah. again, I do have, like, yeah, but you don't gloves on. Yeah, right, right. But I'll put them right in my boot. Oh, sure. But there's usually like you know I have a sock. Yeah. On so you need like a knitted. They need like yeah, it's like a pouch, but like, it can't be by the balls, just the penis. No, you need like a a knitted uh a penis uh koozie for lack of a better word, you know to yeah, stick, a koozie works to stick it in, you know like a like a a a, 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 a knitted formed. Penis shaped sheath. Yeah. That you could put up and then tie around the sack and stuff. Well, can't they just, you know, like in lunch coolers, there'll be like a little pocket to put your frozen, yeah. like the, your chiller in. Yeah. Why can't there just be like a pocket to put the hot hands in? Yeah, I don't. I don't know, dude. Uh, There's I am, two dudes from one event with yeah, frozen peens. Right. I don't think they were dressed correctly. I don't think they had their uh, thermal layers thing working. Look at how cold was it again? Let me see that thing. Let me get a. Let me get a look at that frozen. It was in the Arctic Circle. Where's the penis? What well, does it show you the penis? Well, pff, I'm a doctor. I knew I, you wanted to take I, a look I, at I, it. I gotta see it. I'm sure, Lance will want to know what it looked like later. Pervert. Pervert! So that's it? That's the guy? That's what they're wearing. It's a tiny suit. Oh. Yeah, that's not enough to keep frozen dick Space away. Space age technology. Right. I don't know if... It, you Cross-country get... skiers compete in skin-tight racing suits, leaving them susceptible yeah. to low temperatures. To keep uh, uh, wind efficient. To be, you know? Yeah. Weight. I'm sure ounces add up when now, you're when you're doing ten miles on cross country ski. This other fellow, Lindholm, had previously frozen his penis during the Beijing Olympics. Oh, pshh. and after doing so again in Ruka, he told the media, "It's bad." Weird, and you can't go in a shower and just put hot water on it. You gotta you gotta slowly dethaw it. Well, I don't. How do we not have better technology? <laughs> How are these dudes out here right. freezing their like, wieners it's, off? It's like they're cross country skiing in outer space. How are, <laughs> right. how are, I'm like how are so kids? confused. Right? Why don't you just pull off to the heat shed and and and, and stick it in some warm water for a minute? <laughs> Why? What's more important, the metal or my penis? Working? Well, yeah. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense, does it? It doesn't. Yeah. I. I yeah. I, I don't know uh, cross country skiing. God, that looks so boring to me. I like cross country skiing. Uh, yeah, you can have that. But I'm not. I mean, I'm not doing it fast. Rather, I'm doing it to enjoy the nature sure, around me. Sure. You know, I like to ski fast down to the bar. Yeah, that's why. That's how I like to do it. Yeah, I know you do. But I've never frozen my penis off at Tyrol Basin. That'd be that'd be weird if that's I. That's the plug they're looking for. I went and flopped it on the manager's desk. I ain't never froze my penis off at Tyrell Basin. That sounds like a country song. <laughs> I ain't never froze my penis at Tyrell Basin. What rhymes with basin? Mason? Chasen? Chasen would work. Blazing? No. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, you'd think there would be uh, uh, some kind of homemade apparatus you think the first time would be enough it would be like, yeah, no, I'm fixing this. Right, but it's clearly an epidemic. Yeah, yeah. What did that lady say? It's an epidermis epidemic. Epidermis epidemic. Yeah. Yeah, you think uh, something breathable and yet something like, with, uh, I'm trying to think. 
Uh, you know what I have that's really nice? I, I have uh, no, I, I have it. like these 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 fur lined jeans I used to wear at the barn. Yeah. They look like regular jeans, but they had the liner in them. Yeah. The fuzzy, like warm, nice liner built into mm-hmm. them. Best pair of jeans ever. Yeah. You look fashionable yet utility. I can tell how much work you were doing out there if you're trying to look fashionable. My butt looked great. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just sit around, with my butt sticking out, staring out at the pasture. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was ama- I wouldn't last long on Yellowstone. Rip, <laughs> rip would tear my head off. Yeah. Uh, totally. No, I, I, yeah, that's uh, that's a twice. That's they a, sell wiener heaters on Amazon. That thing's gonna quit working at some point. Yeah, that one fella's like, I do it all the time. Gears out, Peter heater. Of course, of course. <laughs> Let me see. Let's see if I strap. We need to get one of those for Ray Stevens. Well, that's what I was talking about. It's that's exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> I know. That is a crochet. That is a knitted, form-fitting. You know, the sack, the penis, separate compartments. Got a little drawstring. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. How much is that? Twenty-one dollars. Worth every it penny. It seems worth it. Doesn't I'll, it? I'd pay forty thousand dollars for that if I was on cross-country skiing. I think it would work. I mean. Yeah. Well, why is nobody else worried about it? You know, if you were really going to do it right, uh, and again, it would add weight, but you could use like a couple of AAA batteries. You could do a heated, you know, like a boot liner or a glove, heated glove. I mean, we heat our grips on our Harleys. I mean, how hard is it to make a heated wiener sheath? I mean, how tough is that? It can't be. A couple of batteries? I mean, you're not out there that long, are you? I don't think so. Just turn it on, and let it regulate itself. Throw on low, off you go. Yeah. Shush, off you go. Mush, mush. <laughs> well, yeah. Is that something we need to work on? No, I don't think. I think that's above. I mean, if you, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will be. You can use my penis for subject matter, I but I, but I, I can tell you something. You're going to be knitting for a long time. Mostly because I don't know how to knit. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. I'm like, you just got your weeder out. I'm uh, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's, that's a good answer. I got to admit, that's a good answer. Hi, Hus- Hello? We have snowmobile gloves that are heated. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. They're great. They almost get too hot. For cry out. Yeah, like why are these guys just letting their wieners get? Hi. You guys are beating this wiener story too much. It's true. It's true. Hi, how's it going? Wouldn't is it better to have blood flow to the appendage? That would keep your hands warm. It would probably keep your pecker warm. Yeah. Uh, are you well, saying then you could go with? You could give yourself a job and get blood flow going to it, get going. Oh, oh, dude, and then it'd be more aerodynamic. Oh, I see what you're going saying. Going down I, the hill. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's like a... Maybe uh, you could tape, like, hand warmers to eat inside of your thigh there a little bit to help warm it up a little bit. Uh, you would you would look like that guy on a horse in the, in the, in the suit with the... What do they call that thing? Not fencing. What do they call that thing? Uh, the jousting. Jousting. Thing. You'd be, yeah. you, you, that, that would make the 5 o'clock news. I don't think, think you want to be known as that guy. I don't think you want to be the guy. Well, with the, if you, yeah, but if you win the gold uh, medal. I think you want to be. People the guy, are going to be doing it. Like the guy from Sweden with a heart on. I, I, I don't think that's. But, right. That's but what you like, want. I might not have a wiener. If but you I, win, <laughs> you're going to start a new trend. <laughs> Chubby downhill. Nobody's watching that on the Olympics. All the footage is from the waist up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all edited before it goes out. It's, like, it's weird. It's like, they're, it's like they're gliding on air. I don't know. All yeah. the spectators are gay men and women. <laughs> he, got, he got three skis instead of two. Yeah. Nice. All right, thanks. All right, that's good, Emmy. Hi, how's it going? Johnny, place a hand warmer directly over your heart. That'll keep your uh, keep your little guy warm all day. Oh, right over your heart. You okay, got, you got, sure. uh, makes sense. You got, some, you got some arteries going down there. Yeah, you? sure, sure, sure. Makes sense. All right, thanks. Yeah, it's got to be a movement, friction, weight element to it. That that 
you know, over, like I said, like 20 miles or something probably adds up to, you know, yeah, slowing you down or making you tired or whatever, it, or your glide or your motion. What There's got to be something there that, that they don't want to cover the penis up. Every advantage, every ounce is an advantage. Mom. I can't imagine wanting something so bad. Right. That you freeze. That your... I let my cooter freeze. It's just wild to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's always a point in the show where I stop and I go, I was not expecting to wake up and hear that today. <laughs> that, that's exactly where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's see. What if. Uh, I'm just trying to think of an example. <laughs> Uh, well, what if you were? What if your car? Well, what if what if your car broke down and somebody came along, stole all your clothes, and then left you alone? <laughs> what? <laughs> I know it's hard to. What? It's hard to. Yeah, come up with the right circumstance. Yeah, no. I know. Yeah, right. That would yeah would take something you would really passionately want to do. I, well, I have a heat seater on your saddle. No, I use it in my car. Do they make a heated saddle? I don't know. Boy, there's something we could look yeah, into. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, they make heated seats on the on the motorcycles and, yeah. and car heated seats. What? How do you not have a heated horse saddle? Yeah, no kidding. Oh, wow. I, you'd think there'd be a pad. Right. You could add on with some batteries and, totally. and keep, your, keep your ass warm. Although when you're riding out in the cold, that usually stays warmer anyways. But. Yeah, we, we all have the heated vest. And then you could take it off when you're riding cause, or shut it off because you go from hot, cold, hot, cold. Right. But I can't imagine wanting a gold medal so bad. You're like, I don't need my wiener. And it has to hurt. He said it was the most pain you can imagine. But, I mean, people say that about childbirth, so. I think you just come up with a, um, even if you tucked it for airflow, you'd think there'd be a better, warmer way to do it. Like a special pair of, of, of under, thin, super insulated yeah. underwear, you know, they could tuck it. How are we not, I mean, <clears throat> you think about all the other Olympic sports and the aerodynamic suits with the space age technology. Yeah. How has nobody been like? The cross country guys are freezing their wieners off. Yeah. Let's take care of them. The one thing I'd give up for a gold medal is to keep my penis for a bronze medal. You know, yeah, I would either bail or whatever. But maybe they maybe it happens and they don't know what's happening, and then they stop, and then they're like, ah, yeah, wieners froze. We're <laughs> <laughs> gonna go to the quick trip car wash and get this thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Hi, how's it? It was the worst pain you can imagine, but it was a it was a bicyclist that said that. So, yeah. Mm. A bicyclist. No, what race it. was that? Hi, how's it going? Yeah, the house. It's a styrofoam cup, and it's got a, like a bungee cord that runs through the middle of it uh-huh. for your spigot on the house. Yeah. So you take the holes off the spigot, and you wrap that little bungee cord around the spigot, and then you pull on it, and it sucks that sucks the styrofoam cup up to your wall. So they wrap that around their junk and put it in their pants. I was say, we, still, cup. we still talking about cross country skiing. <laughs> like, are you hitting on me? I didn't know what was. Put the styrofoam cup in their junk. Then we'll keep no, them warm. I, yeah, it's no, light, I, I got lightweight, you. Yeah. aerodynamic. Yeah, yeah. Right. no, it makes perfect sense. Just, you think you think hand warmers in there? REI would have come up with a with a penis wrap <laughs> by yeah. now. You know, it's unbelievable. Untapped market. You, they don't have any neoprene for that. Yeah, exactly. That's all you need. Like a, like a neoprene. Good call, dude. Uh, uh, one of those, one of those boots. Those, those high end boots at the farm that I never had a pair, but the muck boots. The muck boots. Oh, they're not cheap. They're like three hundred dollars. Yeah, and then there's the other ones that are. Um, are you thinking of like the fur ones? But I would think this. The idea would be to keep air out, airflow out, and, mm-hmm. and, and maybe close it off. Anyways. Good. Okay. Well, that was a good meeting. I Crazy feel like we stuff. saved a lot of wieners. The JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Catch a new show every Monday through Friday, 6 till 10 a.m. on 941 JJO or streaming anywhere in the JJO app. Johnny and D. 
Nowhere but JJO.